Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sayyid Wasim Naqwi and I live in the United States in Virginia outside Washington DC and I'm here for Arbaeen of Imam Hussein. The Arbaeen of Imam Hussein is the world's largest gathering of human beings. It's the world's largest annual gathering of human beings and it's unprecedented in the world. There are upwards of 20 million people here. Uh, they have come from all over the world. There are over 80 nationalities present here. There are people from all over Iraq, from all the towns and cities and villages of Iraq. There are over 2 million people from Iran here. We come here to honor our Imam, Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein sacrificed his life and the life of his family, his companions. They were uh, massacred in a brutal manner uh, because he spoke up and stood up against oppression, against tyranny, against in inhuman treatment, against terrorism. He saved the divine revelation of his grandfather, Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam. He stood up in support of divine justice. What he did was eternal. Uh, he, uh, his sacrifice does not have, is not confined to a particular time or to a particular group of people. His sacrifice is universal. He, uh, he, he sacrificed his life for the message and for the principles he wanted to deliver. And, and, and that does not have any ethnicity, any nationality, uh, any boundaries. Uh, when my father went to the United States in 1960, they said, my father Sayyid Asghar Abbas went to the United States, they said, no, they don't commemorate the sacrifice of Imam Hussein in the United States. But he said, what Imam Hussein did was universal. It, it does not have any boundaries. So he started the first majlis in 1960 in Washington, D.C., where he had Hindus, where he had Christians, where uh, there were people from, of all faiths. There were a few people, but that's how we started. Now we have many Imam Bargas, and many Husaniyas all over the United States, all over Washington with thousands of people who commemorate uh, the sacrifice of Imam Hussein and what Imam Hussein did. He stood up for his principles. He stood up against uh, tyranny, against terrorism against oppression. When he was all alone in Karbala, he had sacrificed his life. He had sacrificed, he had sacrificed the life of his companions. He was about to sacrifice his life, uh, the life of his uh, family, his friends, his companions. But he was victorious. It seems incongruous that, how is it that he was victorious? If you look at the tens of thousands of people who fought him and were opposed to him, they're in the trash of history. Their names are synonymous with tyranny and oppression. But Imam Hussein's message was eternal and he was victorious in his message. And Arbaeen is a manifestation of that. If you look at Arbaeen, it's an unprecedented event. You have people who come here to honor Imam Hussein. They honor his message. They honor his sacrifice. They not only come here in the largest gathering of humanity in the world on an annual basis, but they walk from Najaf to Karbala, which is about 90 uh, kilometers, and it's approximately 60 miles. Uh, they, uh, with stirring chants of Labbaik Hussein, 
with chants of Hussein as they walk. And I, I've been coming here for the last three years. I've, I came here for the first time three years ago for Arbaeen. And I've been walking all along. And I have seen amazing scenes. I have seen old ladies who could barely walk, walking from Najaf to Karbala. I have seen old men who also could barely walk. I have seen people in wheelchairs. I have seen uh, people who had limbs missing, but they were taking one step at a time and saying, Labbaik Hussein, and walking uh, to Karbala. But not only are they walking to Karbala, but it's an amazing scene. Their accommodations are taken care of. They have a place to sleep. And it's free of charge. Uh, the locals open up their homes and their mokavs, which, are, which is a term that used for people who serve the zawar of Muhammad Hussain. There are people who come from all over the world who open mokavs and they serve the zawar. So when people are walking and people are in Kabbalah, their accommodations are free, their food is free, they have tea, water, fruit, People are there to massage their feet. They have free medical treatment. And there are no deductibles for their medical treatment. They have absolutely free medical treatment. People are massaging their feet. People are polishing their shoes. Little girls are giving tissues for, to people to take. And they're imploring you to please uh, help, to help, let them help you. They feel honored that they can serve the zawar of Imam Hussain. It's an uh, unprecedented display of looking after each other. And the other thing that's really incredible is that there is no distinction amongst the people who are here, who are serving Imam Hussain and people who are walking. Uh, there are PhD professors from universities in California. There are doctors and accountants and technologists, they're billionaires, and they're ordinary people, but there's no distinction. In honoring Imam Hussain and his principles and his ideals, which are universal and eternal, there is no distinction. They're all the same. They're all walking to Karbala to honor their Imam. Uh, they're serving their fellows of all. I, I, I uh, had a meeting with an ayatollah, a respected scholar, yesterday, and he was telling me a story that there was somebody who was even offering money. He had it on a tray and he had it on his head so he wouldn't see who would take it. But there were some people observing it and what was amazing was that there was no greed. At the end of the day, there were more people putting money in than taking out. So there's no greed. People eat uh, as much as they can, whatever they need, uh, to show and they uh, care for each other. So this is the, uh, the message of Imam Hussain. To look, uh, this is the true message of Islam. Uh, in the world, in the West, and in many countries, there is a very distorted image of Islam. A couple of years ago when I was here, ISIS was not too far from here. Uh, and they even threatened the, the march. But more people came after their threats. But the world was showing ISIS and their beheadings and their distortion of Islam as opposed to the Islam of Imam Hussein, the Islam that he preserved, uh, which is a universal message. And here we have people from all religions. We have Christians, we have people of the Jewish faith, we, we have Hindus, we have people from different sects of Islam. So there's no distinction in honoring Imam Hussain. Uh, I've seen processions of Christians, I've seen pr processions of uh, the Jewish people. Uh, so th there is no uh, distinction whatsoever. I, th there's an ex-congressman in the United States who was here this year. There are people uh, here from all walks of life from all over the world. And they're walking to Karbala. They reach Karbala to honor Imam Hussain, upwards of 20 million people. Uh, 
There are also mock-ups which serve them. We've had a mock-up for the last three years, which is the American mock-up. I believe it's the only American mock-up. Uh, we were honored and blessed that the Imam Hussain Shrine gave, uh, gave us a facility, which is one of their office buildings, and we have a mock-up there where we serve the Zawad. We give them water, we give them cakes and pastries and food, and which is a tremendous honor. If you're associated with serving the Zawar any way whatsoever, it's a great blessing. Because the Zawar are the honored guests of Imam Hussain. And when you have the ability to serve the honored guests of Imam Hussain, it's a true privilege. The other thing I think that people should uh, honor and understand is the tremendous role that Bibi Fatma Zahra Salam Allah Salam Sallallahu Alaihi played. She's one of the true heroes of Karbala. Imam Hussain sacrificed his life, all his companions and his family uh, that supported him died, but she was the one who led uh, his family after that. Yeah, Imam Sayyidina Sajjad Zainal Abdeen was sick and she kept the family together and she got the message of Karbala across. So she played one of the most critical and important roles. And this is the lesson we have to learn. We have an, an event that's amazing, it's unprecedented. There's nowhere else in the world that you have an event like Arba'in. But we have to get the message across. We have to follow in the footsteps of Bibi Zainab. We live in a world that is increasingly globalized. There's globalization. There's tremendous exponential growth in communication technology and advances. There, we live in an age of social media. So it is our responsibility to get this amazing message of our Imam to the world. So that the world knows what Imam Hussain stood for and the sacrifice he made. And the event of Arba'in, where people are not selfish, people are not greedy. There's no distinction amongst the followers of Imam Hussain. We are all here to honor his message, to honor him. So please, if you are listening to me, be an ambassador of Arba'in. If you have an opportunity, please come here. If you have an opportunity, please serve the Zawar of Imam Hussain and get the message of Imam Hussain to the world, to use the technology to get that message to everyone in the world. And each one of you can play a very important role. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. Uh, inshallah, uh, I plan to be here every year to walk from uh, Najaf to Karbala, to honor our Imam, to serve the Zawar of Imam Hussain in Amokab, uh, it's a great honor and privilege for me to be here and to be part of Arbaeen, which is a tremendous event. Shukran jazeelan, tashakkar khayle mamnu, thank you, shukriya, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you.